It is March of 2025 and Shrewness Faintooth 25.04 is in release candidate with a predicted release date of April 15th of 2025. Now there's some good news here. There's lots of welcome changes. There's also some news that may bother some of you around the virtualization because there's some breaking changes there. And sometimes to move forward, you have to break things in between. So we're going to cover both what's cool, what's really cool, but what also may break when you do this upgrade and some of the workarounds for it. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, one of the reasons I'm doing this as a release candidate, as opposed to the full version, which I will cover if there's any major changes, but generally speaking, once something gets to release candidate, that means they're just doing bug fixes, and this should be, generally speaking, interface complete. Although there are some changes coming in a point release that we'll get to shortly around apps and IP addresses, which I know a lot of you are probably looking forward to. The notable change, though, in the interface, and as I said, this is 2504RC1, is we don't just have these widgets like we got in the previous versions. We have the ability to add the applications to the widgets. So if you go over here to configure, we can add a widget. We can choose the different layouts and we can choose now a app category and then choose different apps to put in there. And it gives you a live preview. So you can choose the different layouts for the widget editor, but it will let you know, for example, if the application supports these other sizes. In the case of the application widgets, it's expecting them to be full size. So we'll go here. We'll choose an application and you can see it updates. And then if I wanted to hit save, that will be added to the list here. And they're still drag and drop, so I can still move them around if I wanted to bring this up here. Hit save. And now we can see the applications. Now, jumping over to the release notes, which you'll find linked down below, it does remind you that you shouldn't be running this in production. I agree with them, but I also know many of you who are watching this video want to test it before you run it in production. So actually, I've already loaded this on several of my systems that I'm using because I want to find out if there's any bugs. And I like being part of the community that contributes to the finding of bugs or the reporting of problems. That's one of the other reasons I'm doing the early release version here. But of course, adjust it for your risk tolerance. And, you know, maybe some people like to do things in production, but I'm not recommending it. This has so far been stable for me, but as of right now, this is a release candidate and not a full release. So if you are going to do this production, just want to encourage people. Also, before you update, please do a backup. Now, they have a lot of cool features on the underlying system that is going to be really nice for people who are waiting for NFS over RDMA support. That is something that's going to be coming with 2504, but only for the enterprise version. Same thing with fiber channel support, enterprise version as well. But those of you that may be needing some special things like iSCSI X copy support through Zval block cloning. This, if you're not familiar with it, if you're presenting something like a Windows system with block storage, which is a common enterprise storage configuration, or maybe even for your Steam games in the case that I've used it, uh, this can be a fast way using Xcopy to get the data moved around faster when needed. So actually, that's a change that may be more significant to some of you than you may think. Now, other than the general improvements that they have here, the part we can't ignore is the new and improved virtualization features. This is the part where I said there's going to be some breaking changes. TrueNAS 2504 replaces the previous KVM hypervisor used in TrueNAS 2410 and earlier with Incus virtual machine deployment. It also includes support for Linux system containers, LXC, enabling lightweight isolation similar to jails in TrueNAS core. I really like that they added this and I'm okay with companies who rip the band-aid off, so to speak, and go, you know, there's a good way to integrate this and we're going to remove KVM. We're going to move in to the Incus world and say, we're going to be able to do containerization and virtualization and have one system for doing it. 
I understand that. This is obviously going to be controversial for those of you that are going, but I liked KVM and now my KVM will break if you're hosting VMs inside of your TrueNAS. And I get that that's a problem. I get that there's a challenge. You either stay with the way you are doing it and maybe you bolt something else on, or you say, well, this can replace the demand for both LXC containers and ritualization with one system. Uh, go ahead and head over to their forums if you want to have a discussion or leave some thoughts and comments on that one. But I know it's going to be one of those, you know, design decisions were made. Follow, by the way, their podcast, the have their TrueNAS Tech Talk, and you can get a better idea of behind the scenes and the thought process that lead to the decisions for changing some of these things out. But nonetheless, check out that podcast, head over to their forums. There's a lot of discussion around this, and I know this is going to be a hot topic to a lot of people. But I want to jump down to the part where manual migration required. This is the pain point. Do those configuration, the swapping out of KVM, you're going to have to manually take these existing VMs that you have and they don't transfer automatically, but when you build a new VM, you can point it back to the ZVAL that built your previous VM. It'll retain those ZVALs so you can import that VM and boot it back up. So if you're running some link switch machines, there is a path forward, even though it's a manual one. And I don't imagine, maybe I'm wrong, that people have a lot of VMs. So while it is a pain point, it is not an impossible path to get to the updated version that they have in here. Now, this is the more important part, and this is a little bit of a breaking change for those of you that are dragging your feet on upgrading and you're still running some of the older versions that have the Kubernetes back in. There is a deadline for that. And I'm really excited the way they're doing this because this will help minimize the breaking changes. They've left the path and they made this, in my opinion, very clear. When we get 2504, as in right now, it's in release Canada, but even when it's released, we don't get full support for adding IPs per app. This is something I know a lot of people want, but that's actually not coming till June 1st. What they're doing here is doing kind of a staged rollout because this is going to be a change that will break if people try to upgrade from older versions. So they're letting people know that if you're on the older version and you have not upgraded and migrated your apps, and by the way, in 2504 from the 2410, all my apps migrated fine. The next step, though, is getting them upgraded to the full release of 2504, and then it'll probably be a point release later that we get the ability to add a single IP address per app. So I know this has been requested for a long time because you load up all these apps. I think the app ecosystem has become quite extensive. It works relatively well. They have done a lot of fine tuning, so every iteration of TrueNAS has really improved it. But of course, now comes the time where we want to say, Yes, I want to be able to bind these to certain IPs and, you know, have more advanced networking options, which I know someone will point out it's been available if you do it from the command line or load some other third party Docker manager on there, you can do it. But having it natively supported in SureNAS is ultimately what we'd all like to see. And that's coming and it looks like it should be here by June 1st of 2025. But you have to do some upgrading here. And one last note here before I show the Inca system is they are now changing the naming a little bit. So yes, it's time to get off core. We're calling it TrueNAS Community Edition going forward. And then we have TrueNAS Enterprise. Enterprise obviously being for the enterprise people that are looking for support. Full disclosure, I'm an IX system reseller and we do install these in many, many large, very large commercial environments and data centers. Uh, so we do use the TrueNAS Enterprise version and TrueNAS Core, I've been mentioning it each time there's an update that yes, it's time to get off of core. This is just another reminder for those you go, well, I didn't watch any of Tom's previous videos. Is it time to get off core? Yes. And it's not gonna be really called Called scale and core. We're going to go with TrueNAS Community Edition and TrueNAS Enterprise uh, just for simplicity. This is just a kind of a clarification from the people developing TrueNAS IX systems to uh, get us all on the same page. Now let's take a look at those containers and LXC and what that looks like. Now from the TrueNAS dashboard, we're going to go down over here to instances because that's what they're calling them now. Apps are still apps and they look the same. The whole app system hasn't really changed much. As I said, we don't have the ability just yet to add those IP addresses, but instances is the virtualization, but this is gonna handle virtualization and containers. So you have the option when you're creating a new instance, you can create a container, a Linux only container or a virtual machine. This is nice the way they've done this because if I wanted to spin up something like, let's say Alpine Linux, and I can click right here and select the different variations here. Fedora, Debian, et cetera, Mint. There's a lot of different options and containers here, including some of the Ubuntu ones. I think this is a nice way to do it because it's made it 
overall, I would say fairly simple. So for some reason, I wanted this Alpine 318. Hit select. We give it a name here. And uh, we can let it fill in automatically all of these other details. So let's just hit create. It'll automatically create the bridge networking. I could add a NIC to it, but I'm not going to just for this demonstration. And it downloaded and has that container running. So it shows your containers here. It shows your VMs here. I think this is nice, but there's a kind of a problem I have with the way it was implemented and the way it's designed that I think may change by the time it gets into production. Please note the giant experimental marked up here. The problem I have is probably easier to show than explain. So I SSH into the system running the latest version and I do ZFS list so I can see all the pools and all the data sets. But I want to point out here the flashy pool and the hidden directories here of IXvert. This is the new virtualization. So there's some buckets container. Hey, there's that Alpine container right here. And there's the Debian ISO I uploaded so I can create a VM. So I created that one dev test VM. But because these are all essentially hidden, when I go back over here to data sets on the system itself, they're not showing. The challenge with that, of course, is what if I wanted to do something like go to data protection and let's say I want to create a replication task and on this system, well, they're hidden here too. And I'm thinking this is going to be kind of a challenge and maybe I'm just missing something uh, for how they're going to handle being able to back up the VMs or containers, or maybe you should be only building the containers and scripting things in them so you don't think as much about backing them up. But it's one of those little things, especially when it comes to virtual machines and seeing the Z-Vols. I liked it before as I could see the Z-Vol and move it around. Now I could do it from the command line, but I don't have the ability that I see here at least to be able to do a replication task for it. And as I said, this is something that maybe because this is, as it noted right here, marked experimental at the top, uh, maybe I'm making a suggestion for how this could be done or how you can edit these and be able to pull information in and out of them or back up some type of data that is within them. Ideally, maybe you want to mount some of the uh, data to another spot and you think of the containers as ephemeral, which I agree with when it comes to the containers, but the VMs a little bit different. I want to be able to manipulate the Z vials created. But as I mentioned before, if you're doing a migration, if you do a VM, you can use a Z vial previously created and you can see them if they're on here. I don't have any extra Z vials. As a matter of fact, it's hiding the Z vial that's created from the other one as well. But I did test this on another system where I built a VM and then did the upgrade. And it does have the option then to point it to that Z vial because the Z vial is mounted in the pool. So that seemed to work. Now, as mentioned earlier in the video, this is a release candidate, not for production use, but probably many of you that are watching this video like to stay on the cutting edge as I do. And I have updated four systems and they all went fine. Always make sure you have a backup. And just because my update went fine doesn't mean all updates will go fine. The one that surprised me was the little Franken-ass mini PC I did with that little adapter with TrueNAS. You'll find that video linked down below. Now, can you roll back? Yes, absolutely. You can upgrade. If it doesn't go well, there is the ability to roll back. But one thing you can't roll back is if you roll forward and move to 25, there is a new feature flag added and it's in the description. This is the fast dedupe that was added. This is a pretty cool feature, but dedupe is not a solution for everyone. I'll probably do a future video now that there's this option in there and just don't automatically enable dedupe. That can cause you all kinds of problems. This will just cause you less of those problems because they've done a lot of reworking of the code. And also there's a video I did recently interviewing Alan Jude with Clara Systems because this was the Clara Systems and IX Systems contributing to this fast dedupe code to enhance it. And uh, it's a good discussion where we talk that and a lot of other ZFS topics, but you'll find that video linked down below. Also, check out the TrueNAS Tech Talk podcast. I really recommend it. I love that they're doing a podcast and gives you a little bit more insight behind the scenes of how they think about and how they develop things. So go ahead and like and subscribe to that. Like and subscribe to Lawrence Systems to see more videos from the channel. Head over to the TrueNAS forums or my forums. You'll find me in either one of those. Uh, it's a great place to engage with the community. And of course, head over to lawrencesystems.com to connect with me on whatever socials you find me on there. All right, and thanks.